Dr. Robin, how do I talk to my kids about scary stories that happen in the news? How do I talk to them when they come home and their school has had an active shooter drill and they ask me, is it really true? Would a person come into our school and try to shoot us? When there's an anniversary of something scary in the news and everyone's talking about it and my kids turn to me and say, did that really happen? Did September 11th really happen? Did whatever story that the news is talking about, really somebody shot children on purpose? How do I talk to them about it when I myself, as a post-traumatic parent, feel very unsafe? Like I'd rather just keep the news off and I, I don't wanna think about these things. How do I talk to my kids about this and how do I help them understand it without terrifying them and without completely scaring them about everything? As a post-traumatic parent, no one talked me through scary things that happened in the world, so I just don't know how to do this and I want to do it right. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Koslowitz, YouTube's post-traumatic parenting expert. Have you ever had this worry? Do you ever worry, how can I talk to my children about scary events in the news? How do I help them make sense of something terrifying, something that doesn't make very much sense to me? And how do I talk to them about safety without scaring them? I've got you, we're gonna talk about it. But first, please click subscribe below so you never miss another episode because the kind of post-traumatic parenting skills that we learn on these videos are skills that you may not have learned in your own childhood or maybe you know that your parents tried their best but you'd like to do it a little bit better. So that's what the post-traumatic parenting community is all about. So today, we're gonna learn about teaching kids about scary stories in the news, talking to them about those stories, and we're gonna teach them the concept of probability and possibility. And here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna use my handy dandy little lollipop jar. So if you look at my lollipop jar, it's full of all sorts of different lollipops, right? Mostly, my lollipop jar is full of green lollipops. We have some light green lollipops and some dark green lollipops, but mostly it's full of lollipops. You'll notice that there's a yellow lollipop and a red lollipop, but on the whole, if I reach into this jar, what would you expect me to pull out? So if you understand math at all, the high likelihood is that I will pull out a green lollipop right? And every time I reach into the jar, I will pull out a green lollipop because most days in our life are green lollipop days. Everything that happens sort of happens and it's just a regular day. Most people that we meet are like green lollipops. They're, they're good enough people. They're fine. You know, you meet a new kid at school, you go to the grocery store and you see a lady that's dressed a little oddly, but she's fine. She's harmless right? You might smell something that smells a little odd coming from a new kind of store that you're walking past, but it's not dangerous, just the unusual smell. Because most people, most things, most situations are green lollipops. And so mostly you can expect, even if there was a scary story in the news, that you are going to go to school and it's going to be a regular green lollipop kind of day. There will be no gunman. There will be no terror attack. There will be no bomb threat. It will be a regular normal day in school. You know, at a normal day in school, there might be a, I don't know, vocabulary pop quiz and there might be your best friend might be annoyed at you and not want to be your partner in science lab. And maybe, you know, your teacher will be absent and there will be a, a sub and you don't like the sub as much as you like your teacher. But on the whole, most days are gonna be green lollipop days. Even if there's some stress in a green lollipop day, it's not very stressful, it's a little bit stressful and that's what's most likely. I'm gonna keep reaching into this jar and even without looking, I'm gonna keep pulling out green lollipops. Most people you meet are green lollipop people. Every so often though, there's a problem. There's a yellow lollipop person or a yellow lollipop day. A yellow lollipop person or a yellow lollipop day is a time where something happens that's 
more challenging than a green lollipop. Something scary, but it doesn't rise to the level of dangerous. For example, you know that odd looking lady in the grocery store? She stands a little too close to me and it makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'm getting a signal, like a yellow alert, that something's a little bit off here. I don't like this. That substitute teacher is calling kids names, like saying that my friend, is, my friend Alex is a loser. And that feels wrong, that's confusing. That's not how adults are supposed to act. You know, we're driving home and the bus breaks down and the driver says we have to get out of the bus and we're at the side of the, the highway and that feels really scary. There's a lot of cars rumbling past. I'm not so sure that's safe. What do I do? Right, so sometimes we have yellow lollipop days. Yellow lollipop days are confusing. When we're confused, we ask an adult. So when that, that lady in the grocery store is standing a little too close and acting a little oddly and I don't like the way she's standing so close to me, I might say something to my mom, right? I might stand behind my mom and say to my mom, you know, I, I'm feeling uncomfortable or maybe I'll whisper in my mom's ear. You know, when that new person that I meet is saying hurtful, mean comments to me and I don't like those comments. That substitute teacher called my best friend a loser. I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna talk to my mom about it. And maybe if I'm really concerned and it's during school, I will think about who are my trusted adults. So if I can't access my mom, maybe I know that the school guidance counselor is really nice and she's heard me out in the past. Maybe I trust the principal. Maybe it's my last year teacher. Maybe it's the really nice lady in the lunchroom. Maybe it's my older sister. Maybe it's my older brother. But I'm gonna find someone older than me and wiser than me and I'm gonna ask, because that's that's confusing, right? I don't like it that this substitute is calling Alex a loser. That seems mean for an adult. I am confused. And that adult, I will bring it to the adult's attention and the adult will give me, you know, a, an idea of whether that's safe or not. You know, just recently I was talking to a child who had a yellow lollipop experience where the child noticed that one of the toddlers, their school had a toddler daycare. The child noticed that one of the toddlers had somehow managed to like crawl under a hole in the fence and was on the street. That's a yellow lollipop experience. Like, are the teachers of the toddler class noticing that? And ran to find an adult and he said, this toddler, you know, this little kid is out of the fence. Are, are they allowed to be there? And the adult alerted the toddler teachers and, you know, it was all figured out. That's a yellow lollipop experience. That could have been dangerous. Nothing actually happened. You noticed something and like they say, you see in all the public transportation, if you see something, say something. If you're on the bus and you see a package and you're like, what is that package? Why is that here? Tell an adult. You see something, you say something. Because that's what a yellow lollipop day is. We noticed something confusing, could be dangerous. So we went and we found an adult and we asked the adult. And the adult hopefully would be able to figure out what the smartest thing to do in that situation is. So that's a yellow lollipop day. Every so often you're going to have a yellow lollipop day. But like I said, mostly we're going to reach in. We're going to keep pulling out green lollipops because most of our days are going to be green lollipop days. Every so often, some in somebody's life, there's a red lollipop day. And when there's a red lollipop day, that's when something really dangerous happens. Now, if you noticed in this jar, this jar is full of green lollipops. Most people's lives, there's only one red lollipop. There isn't a whole bunch of red lollipops. Our brain pulls our attention. Look how you're noticing the red lollipop right now. Your brain notices things that are different and unusual and bright and loud and scary. So it sounds like based on the news that really dangerous, really scary, really confusing things are happening all the time everywhere and it could happen to me at any moment because our brains are attracted, right? You're noticing this red lollipop. You're, not, you're almost not even noticing these green lollipops. There are so many of them because your, your eye automatically goes to the red lollipop because that's how our brains are. Our brains focus on danger. They do that for a very good reason. If you remember in the movie Inside Out, you see my little fear figure over here? At one point, fear says, We did not die today. We call that an unqualified success. The goal of fear is to keep you alive. So fear will automatically draw your attention to the red lollipop days. But you need to know that mostly there's lots and lots and lots of green lollipop days. Now, what do you do if it is a red lollipop day? So this is why you have fear inside your brain and this is why you have anxiety inside your brain. You know how 
Fear says I protect Riley and I keep her alive. And, and anxiety says and I protect Riley from the things she can't see. My job is to protect her from the scary stuff she can't see. I plan for the future. Anxiety tells us, let's worry about that for a minute and let's think. The whole reason why your school has an active shooter drill is because just in case it's a red lollipop day, we want to make sure you all know what to do. We want to make sure that you know the Alice protocol or you know some other form of self-defense. You know where to hide, you know where to drill, you know where to set shelter in place, you know how to evacuate, you know how to keep yourself safe. That's why we have fire drills. We don't have fire drills because we really like hurting little kids' ears with really loud noises. We have fire drills so that everybody hears the signal really loud and jumps out of their seats and follows their teacher in an orderly line and gets out of the building as quickly as possible because usually it's a green lollipop day, right? And most, actually most fire drills are really yellow lollipops. It's scary, it, it could be dangerous, but actually there's no fire. We're just teaching you skills, how to handle things just in case there would be a fire. Every so often though, there's a red lollipop and there is a fire. And if we had a fire drill and we've practiced, you know that the more we practice, the better we get, right? And I'm sure there are so many things that you can think about in your life. Remember when you were learning how to ride a bike and you were wobbly and you fell every so often, but now you ride a bike and you can zip around the corner because the more you practice, the better you got. Think about a baby learning how to walk. At first they're wobbly, but the more you practice, the better you get. There are many things in your life. I want you right now to think of five things that you've done that you got better at with practice. In the same way, we have active shooter drills and fire drills and evacuation drills and all sorts of drills because of every so often there may be a red lollipop day and we wanna be really, 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 really prepared. We don't wanna be scared, we wanna be prepared. And that's why we do that, because yeah, we do every so often have a red lollipop day, but we don't have to worry that every day will be a red lollipop day, even if our brain tells us that, because most days are green lollipop days. Now, if you're, if you're having a worry and you're thinking about like some other story you heard in the news, like what would happen if like there was, I don't know, some sort of a bombing and mom was at work and I got home from the school bus and, and mom wasn't there? You know what, that's your anxiety doing its job because let's come up with a safety plan for that. Indeed, what should you do if you ever came home from school and there was an emergency and mom couldn't get home to you? Which neighbor would be the safest neighbor to go to? Who would you feel safest going to? If you can't go to a neighbor, what would you do? Let's come up with a plan, let's prepare because the goal of anxiety in our brain is to help us think through how to prepare for something dangerous. So let's come up with a plan. I actually was once working with a kid who had a very big fear of fire and he was really worried that one day there could be a fire. And even though all of his days were green lollipop days, he felt like every day was a potential red lollipop day because any day now there's gonna be a fire. So he couldn't fall asleep at night and he would have nightmares about fire and he would get angry if his siblings would leave anything plugged in because what if it would catch on fire? And he even wanted his mother not to keep matches in the house because what if they spontaneously went on fire? So I pointed out that you know anxiety in his brain is teaching him that fire could be dangerous. And what we did was we wrote to the fire station, it was a very long time ago, and we asked them and they sent this whole home safety plan for what to do in case of a fire. And so he followed every single step of the plan. He made sure his father checked all the batteries and all the smoke detectors and actually some of them were out. So you see anxiety was doing a good job. And they made sure that all the smoke detectors had batteries and they wrote a little expiration date on each um, smoke detector so they would know when to change the smoke detector batteries. And their house was a three-story house. So one of the things in the fire safety plan was to have an emergency ladder in upper stories so that people could evacuate. So they ordered, a, they ordered um, a ladder and they had one. They had their whole fire safety kit. And you know what happened? There actually once was a fire in this boy's house, a tiny little fire. But it was a fire in middle of the night. There was an appliance that caught on fire and he absolutely ran the show. He helped his family evacuate 
Um, he actually insisted on climbing down the ladder, even though the fire wasn't anywhere near the staircase and everybody could go down the staircase. But he was so excited to use the ladder. Everybody evacuated. They called 911. The fire department came. They put out the fire. And then this boy felt really good about himself because he had conquered his fear of fire because actually the fear had given him a good warning. He used the warning appropriately and he handled a challenge. So let's understand that, first of all, most days are green lollipop days, right? And mostly you're gonna pull out a green lollipop. Most people are friendly and kind and nice. Most substitute teachers are nice people who just wanna be substitute teachers. Most strangers you meet are nice, kind, friendly people. Most days are gonna be, are just gonna be green lollipop days, regular, normal, humdrum kind of, I just wanna go home already cause like I'm getting bored of, you know, this geometry class kind of days. But when there is a red lollipop day, the more prepared we are, the more we know how to handle it, the safer we're going to be. If, the, if you find this helpful, if you're a post-traumatic parent and because you've experienced trauma, you find it difficult to talk to your kids about scary stories in the news because you'd rather protect them by pretending those things don't happen, I hope you found this helpful. As post-traumatic parents, we need to learn how to manage our own stress response so that we can help our kids deal with theirs. If you like this video, please click subscribe below so you never miss another episode. If you have a topic or something you want me to talk about, if you have a question or a follow-up topic, please comment below. I really do shoot videos in response to the questions I get and the comments I get. If you have a friend, please send this video to a friend who maybe also worries about talking to their kids about scary things that happen in the news. If you want to hang out where your fellow post-traumatic parents hang out, check out at Dr. Koslowitz Psychology on Instagram. That's where the post-traumatic parenting community hangs out. You can find my targeted parenting blog on Psychology Today where I talk about all things parenting, trauma, and how to match your parenting strategies to your children's needs. If you want to hear my interviews with experts about all things trauma and parenting and the intersection of trauma and parenting, check out the Post Traumatic Parenting Podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. The book, Post Traumatic Parenting, is coming out in 2025 from Broadleaf, and you can find, um, there will be a pre-order link very soon on my website, drrobinkoslowitz.com. Until next time.